Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God still gives beauty for ashes? Amen. And that he sees our tears. He counts them as prayers. He interprets them, translates them, and then he performs miracles in our lives. Amen. It's good to see you on today. I want to call your attention to John chapter 15. We are still studying Revelation, but I'm going to take a break to look at love. A series of what I want to call a lessons in love. Very briefly, lessons in love. Lessons in love. And then we will go back to Revelation. Amen. Lessons in love. So today I want to start by looking at the words of Jesus Christ as he speaks to us on the subject matter of love. If there's any subject that all of us could stand to you some more of, it's love. Because the truth is, no matter how much we have been loved, and no matter how much we love, we can stand to love some more. Amen? Amen. So we're standing to our feet now, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. You'll probably recognize this as divine conversation. Amen. Jesus over and over again says, abide in me. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, amen. Then you can ask what you will. This is the vine conversation, amen. I want to focus our attention as we look at John chapter 15 at verse 9. Verse 9 through 13. It's also in your bulletin, amen. And it's above on the decal. John chapter 19, I'm sorry, John chapter 15, thank you very much, verse 9 through 13, and it reads just like this from the NIV. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's command, commands and remain in his love, I have told you this so that, you, that my joy may be in you. That my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one life for his friends. Amen. Do me a favor, do me a favor and just say lessons in love. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. And praise God. Let us pray. Father, fresh, we confess we need you now. We need you to do what only you can do, to help us teach and even preach this word. Open our hearts and our mind. Give us clarity of thought. And then, Lord, allow us to gain, glean, and grow so we might be different and love more. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for the breadth, the depth, the width, the height of your love. In Jesus' name, solo deo gloria, we pray, amen. amen. I want us to consider the words of Jesus as Jesus teaches on love. Because all of us have a need for greater love. And if the truth is told, we're living in a world where there's a deficit of love. So if your love can't stand to be increased, then somebody around you, they need your love. This section of scripture, John chapter 14 through John chapter 17, is known as the farewell or goodbye address. Because Jesus is preparing literally to be tortured and crucified on the next day. He knows that his life is going to be given and taken. That his flesh will be torn from his body. He will be brutalized in every way. He will almost bleed to death and choke to death while hanging on a cross. 
But before he does this, he says, I've got to talk to you about the most important things. And so much of this scripture, or this portion of scripture, the farewell address, deals with love. Because he's trying to get us to understand that if we can get the love thing right, then everything else will come together. He reminds us first, and this is what I really want you to get. This is the summary. Are you ready? He reminds us first that the kind of love that he's talking about comes from the Father. Yeah, I know it doesn't sound prolific, but you got to get this. The kind of love that Jesus is talking about right here, right here, comes from the Father. Now, you have to understand in the scriptures, there are multiplicity. There are lots of different types of love, lots of different kinds of love. And so, since there's so many kinds of love in the Greek and in the Hebrew, I'm not going to give you a long dissertation on all the types of love. But what they've done, what scholars and what persons have done is they've summarized the categories of love. And so they've summarized the categories of love in three major categories. I believe you know that. Okay, let me see if I can. Okay, this isn't working this way. Let me try it this way. Uh, my wife gives me a honey to-do list. She does. And so on this particular time, her request was, I want you to go to the paint store. Uh, Benjamin Moore is the only store I'm allowed to buy paint from. And she said, I want you to get this particular type of paint. Right? And, and so she gave me a little tiny slip of paper and it had the number and the name of the paint. So I got there, I got to the paint store, I was excited, but when I started looking in the car, I couldn't find that slip of paper. But I'm a smart brother, Deacon Banks, so I remembered the paint was red. So with confidence, I walked up to the paint man, I said, excuse me, sir, I need to get some red paint. He said, okay, he walked over to his computer, he said, sir, I have 47 kinds of red paint. I said, oh, um, 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 well... Um, I, I mean, I was in deep confusion because as I started to consider all the kinds and types of paints, even the texture of paints, even the paints that have smells and some that don't have smells, there's a whole lot of different types of paints and they're for different things and they look different and they do different things. Well, can I talk to you for a moment? That's how love is. Really, it's not inappropriate for me to confess to you today that I love of Snickers candy bar. I do. That falls in the eros or the desire form of love. I desire Snickers candy bars. I can eat it to sleep. I can eat it to wake up. That's what I desire. That's desiring form of love or eros in the Greek. That's one form of love. So all of us have some of that desiring form of love flowing around. It could be for a nice car. It could be for some stilettos. Don't say amen, sister. It, it could be for this or for for that, uh, somebody said they desire a certain video game earlier this, you know, in church. Amen. And they said God was going to give it to them. Amen. We'll see about that. Look, the idea is, amen, the idea is all of us have desire and that's to a degree that we can call it love when we're using that definition of eros or desiring form. But then there's another, and this is what I'll call a deserving form of love. Not eros, but a deserving form of love. It's the idea that I'm going to do for you because I know you're going to do for me. It's this quid pro quo. It's I've got something coming from you because you're my brother. Amen. That's why Proverbs 17, 17 says a brother is born for a time of adversity. It's the idea that I can love you. I can be connected to you. I can be committed to you because at the end of the day, I know you're committed to me, connected to me. You're my road dog. You're my homeboy. You're my brother. You're my sister. You're my friend. That is a deserving form of love. A deserving form of love we often call, or in the Greek, is the philos form of love, or familiar, or family form of love. Now, this is good love. It's not bad love, but it's not the ultimate love. Because God is challenging you, and he's challenging me to love some folk who are not in our family. 
Okay, y'all not feeling this. God is saying, I want some Democrats to love some Republicans. Amen. God is saying, I want some educated folks uh, to love some uneducated folks. God is saying, I want some of them to love some of that and some of that to love some of them. God is saying, you don't have to be a Mexican or Hispanic or uh, from across the border to love, I'm not good, my God, let me say, to, to love those who don't speak the same language you speak because okay but that's philos now that's a good form of love and that's all right but God's saying that is not enough because there's another form of love I said there's desire like a Snickers candy bar I said there's deserving like family but then there's another form and that's divine love God is saying I want us I want you to walk with divine love I want you to get to the place that you can love the unlovable yeah that you can love people who don't act right and do right. That you can love people who mistreated you, talked about you, lied on you, spit on you, and dealt with you dirty, dirty. I mean dirty, dirty. God is saying, you got to get to the place when you can practice divine love. But the secret to practicing divine love is right here in this text. Because you can't love divinely in and of yourself. It requires that you are connected connected to the father so jesus says now look this is what jesus says now i love like this because the father loved like this i got this from the father and because i got this from the father i can now give it to you Okay, okay. We, we don't look at the word remain, remain, the word remain. We don't consider that word uh, like it's used in the context. But what he's saying is remain here means allow it to continue. Okay, another way, let it flow. Amen. Why don't you say that? Let it flow. Yeah, let it flow. Jesus says that he wants his love to flow through you. Oh, you're missing this. Look, God says, I have poured out love on you. Now I expect you to pour it on somebody else. Now I think we would normally think that, well, if I'm giving this kind of love out, then I'm going to run out. But God says the only way that this kind of love remains in you is when you pour it out. Oh my God, I, I know I'm in the text because look, 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 he starts to talk to us really about the particular, this kind of love and the benefits of this kind of love. Now we can't go through all the benefits because that's about 12 verses and about two hours. But let me go through a few of the kind, uh, don't worry, I'm not a long-winded preacher most of the time, amen. Uh, look, he says, look, I want to give you some of the benefits that come along with this kind of love. This kind of love, this divine love, this kind of love, this agape love, this father love, it has some benefits. And look, check it out. I'm on the text. I'll show it to you. It says, the first benefit as the father has loved me, so I love you now, remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. And he goes on, and my father's commands, verse 12, my command is this. So the first thing you need to know that when you really start experiencing this kind of love from the Father, you will obey God. Amen. Amen. Okay. 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 I knew this would happen because we don't like to confess. We don't like to admit it. But most of us, okay, another way, all of us have a problem obeying God. Let the church say amen. Yeah. All of us have a problem obeying God. When God requires of us something that we don't like. And, and, and incidentally, I could give you countless examples, but I know per fact that all of us, including me and you, have a challenge obeying God. In fact, can I be honest with you? Theologically speaking, you are unable to obey God in your flesh. Because you, uh, in your flesh, are a slave to sin. 
But once you accept Jesus Christ, you are regenerated. You have new life. You become a slave to the cross. You become a slave to Christ. And it's in him, it's in the love that he gives that you can obey him. Okay, I think I lost a few of you. Let me press my claim. Because even Jesus Christ had to say, shortly after this text, he had to say, Lord, is there another way? Do I have to do this? Do I have to give 10%? Yeah. Do I have to treat them right when they treated me wrong? Do I have to respect them when they disrespected me? Do I have to give in? Do I have to sacrifice? Do I have to serve? These things are a struggle. It was a struggle for Jesus and it's a struggle for us. But here's the good news. As we delve into the love of the divine, as we get close to God, as we love on him and he loves on us, there's something about about his love that's so amazing that makes us do right there's somebody here who used to do a whole lot of dirt they used to do a whole lot of wrong i'm not giving you any classifications but you know who you are amen yeah and they used to do all this stuff but the more they started to praise and the more they started to pray they went to church one sunday and they said i looked at my feet and my feet looked new i looked at my hands and my hands did new i just don't cuss as much because the Lord has done a work in my life. I serve better. I give better. I act better because I love. When you love God, you will obey his commands. Why? Because you love God. I know I'm in the text and that's the good news because there's somebody here who's been struggling with the same thing for a long time and you're beginning to believe that you'll never get through, that you'll never get over it, that you'll never put it down, that you'll never stop sipping, that you'll never stop doing this, that or this. But the good news is don't focus on the sin, but focus on the savior. The more you focus on your friendship and your fellowship, your love and your relationship, the romance that you share with a great God, a saving king, a wonderful sub supreme one you will find yourself less and less happy in mess i gotta move on so first he says one of the benefits one of the benefits of this agape or divine love or love from the father is you will obey his commands but look, that's not all, because it goes on to say, look, look, this is wonderful, and, and we really need to get this right here. This is, this is important right here. This is, this is important. Verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy might be incomplete. Wake your neighbor up. Come on, elbow on real gently. Come on, elbow, elbow. Because look, some of us have incomplete joy. We have incomplete joy. Okay, y'all not feeling me. Let, let me uh, let me do a quick test. Quick test. I need your participation. Quick test. I, I just want you to say uh, good or bad. All right. I'm gonna say a place, and if you believe that place is a place where you feel good or bad, just say if you feel good or bad. So I'm gonna say a place. Let me let me give you a place. Golf course. A few honest people in the house. Restaurant. Honey, 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 I did I hear you? Amen. Uh, uh, okay, let me try another one. Hospital. Oh, man. Courtroom. Okay, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm checking here. Church. Praise God. All right, all right. The beach. Chuck E. Cheese. Okay, y'all, 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 y'all too old for that. But, but look, but look, but look, come here, come here. Because this is important, and if you miss this, you'll miss your blessing. Because look at the text. The text moves us from the place on the outside to the space on the inside. I, I was reading over this, and I, I didn't get this at first. I didn't get this at first. But look at it. But look, look say with me, say with me. It says that my joy may be where? Okay, you're missing that. Uh, verse 11, we, we, we are educated congregation, so, so stay with me. Verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy may be. Okay, a few people got it, a few do. I have told you this so that my joy might be. Where? All right, come here, come here, come here. So even, God forbid, if I am incarcerated, if his joy is in me, then I can write a letter and say, rejoice in the Lord always. 
And again, I say rejoice. Even if it's a bankruptcy case and I got to stand before the judge and the judge has to explain to me my rights and the, the response to this confession. And, and I say I still got to uh, uh, plead bankruptcy. Uh, even in that courtroom, if the door is in me, I'm going to be all right. Even if I'm in JFK and it's not good news and I don't like what the doctor is saying and I don't understand why and I, I can't explain. I, it's not fair, but I'm in the hospital room, but his joy is where? In me. No matter where I am, no matter where I be, his joy is in me. And the good news is he says, my plan for you, my will for you is that as you experience my love, my joy will not be near you, will not be around you, will not be in front of you, will not be behind you. And I could talk right there. Stop looking to the past for all your joy. But my joy will be in you. That's the kind, okay, y'all not feeling me. I, I thought this would happen. I, I, I love Dean John Kenny. I call him Dean, even though he's retired from Virginia Union University. He's no longer the Dean. But I love to tell this story that he told me. I was wondering, he was explaining of how his sons played football. He played football. And so he was at this particular stadium and various dance troops from various colleges came together. And they were all in the center of the stadium and they were dancing. These were young ladies who could dance. I mean, they were doing that. Doom, doom, doom. Dude, they were doing that, you know, flipping and everything. And then at one point, all of the dance troops stayed together. I mean, they had like 20 different dance troops staying together, all to the same music. They were all doing that thing. They were doing that thing. And they were having, the music was blasting. People were standing up. People were clapping because they were doing their dance. But then suddenly, the power to the sound system shut off. And so all the dancers did this. Except for one HBCU, one group of girls from a particular HBCU, I won't say that it was Hampton University, just kept on moving. They kept on moving and kept on dancing. They moved their hands, they moved their fingers, they moved their face, they moved their feet. They were dancing to the rhythm of the beat. But the only problem is there was no beat. They were dancing even though there was no music. And so Dean Kinney was impressed because everybody else had stopped when there was no music, but they kept dancing because they heard the music. And so later on, Dean Kinney said he went to the concession stand. I imagine he was going to get a Snickers bar and a hot dog with a little relish. But while he was standing in line, that same dance troupe came behind him because they were going to order some food too. So Dean John Kinney had to turn around and ask an interrogatory. He had to present a question. He had to say, excuse me, uh, I just got to ask. Uh, everybody else stopped dancing when the music stopped. How is it? How is it that you were able to keep on dancing when there was no music? And they looked at each other for a minute. And then they looked at him and they said, well, they were listening to the music on the outside, but we were listening to the music on the inside. Come here. Come here. Come here. The reason you can't shout and dance and clap right here is because some of y'all need to get the music back on the inside. Because when there's music on the inside, people look at you and wonder, why are you still moving like that? Why are you still waving your hand? Why are you still kicking your legs? Why are you still showing up to church? Why are you still praying and saying amen? Why are you still smiling on your... Why is there a smile on your face? Because there's music on the inside. And it sounds like I know the Lord is good. I know the Lord has make a way. He'll open doors. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Rejoice with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt the Lord together. I sought the Lord. And, okay, okay. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I got one more piece. I got, got one more. Look, 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 look. Look, the idea is this. That you and I will be in places we don't want to be. We will be in moments we don't want to be. We'll have hurts we don't want. That is part of life. We won't like some of the stuff that God assigns us to. Some of the places that God, he, he says, you've got to be there. But even there, he says, because it's in you, you can still rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Repeat after me. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I got about 50% of y'all. I'm going for a hundred. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's about 60. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Okay, I'm going for 80. Rejoice in the Lord even now. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice! 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 
rejoice. Oh, oh okay. I, I think I discovered, I, I missed something. I, I missed something. Good preaching. I, I, I love preaching. And I'm not, not a great preacher, but I love to listen and study good preaching. And I made a mistake. I confess. Please forgive me. Good preaching defines major terms. And I think I failed to define the major term before us. Because what rejoice literally means, what rejoice literally means in the Hebrew is not to patty cake. It's not to go, mm-hmm. It's not to go, all right. But rejoice in the Hebrew literally means to jump up and down. It means to stand up on your feet and be more or a little less than sophisticated. It means to say that God has done so much for me, I can give him a stand. I can give him a praise. And then it means to jump up and down. So wait a minute. If you have not jumped up and down in church in a little while, then according to the definition, according to the Hebrew, I want to let you know you haven't rejoiced. But if you've come to rejoice, if you've come to let the Lord know that He's been better to you than you deserve. He's been better to you than you've been to yourself. That the doctor said it wasn't, but you are. That the report was bad, but you're here. That you got more health and strength than you ever thought you have. That he's paid a few of your bills. I want to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. 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 Rejoice in the Lord! And again, I say rejoice! Yeah! 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 Rejoice in the Lord! Because He is God! And beside Him there's no other! Rejoice in the Lord! Because He's a friend like no other! Rejoice in the Lord! Because he's forgiven our sins, our faults. He's cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. Rejoice in the Lord. Because the Lord is the lover of my soul. Rejoice. Rejoice. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I had a point in the clothes, but I'm not going to give it to you. The song simply says, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a song of... I will bless thee, O Lord. Let's stand to our feet. You want to sing that? You, you want to sing that? No, you won't sing that? Uh-huh. Oh, man. I know she can sing that. Come on, y'all. Let's sing it together. The O Lord. I got to catch my breath. I will bless thee, O Lord. Come on, go ahead. Open up your mouth. Go ahead. Go ahead. I will bless thee, O Lord. 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 With my hands lifted up, with my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless, I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless the old Lord. I will bless the old Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the old Lord. I will bless the old Lord. I will bless the old Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the Lord. The gospel has been preached. Praise God for the word of God. The doors of the church are open.
Is there one who has here today, who is here today, who has never professed hope and faith and